Hello world! In today's video, we are going to look at the differences between the I squared C bus and SPY. Now, this is something which is usually asked in interviews as well. So, let's understand the differences in a logical manner rather than simply memorizing everything in a haphazard way. So, first very obvious difference is in the number of pins. In SPY, we have got four pins, which are MOSI, MISO, SCLK, and CS. In case of I squared C, there are only two pins and they are SDA and SCLK. So that's the first difference. Now there are direct implications of this major difference. First being the on-chip real estate will be less for I squared C due to less number of pins as compared to SPI, which means that I squared C can be implemented at low cost as compared to SPI. So we already have three differences. Let's consider another implication of the pin difference. Now, MOSI and MISO enables SPY to have full duplex communication, which means in SPY, the data can be transferred from master to slave and vice versa simultaneously. In case of I squared C, there is only one data line. Thus, the communication will always be half duplex. In case of SPY, the chip select line allows the master to select the desired slave for communication. Thus, the number of slaves is equal to the number of chip select lines which means more space and more cost as we had covered in an earlier point. Now, due to absence of such a pin in I2C, the I2C master transfers either 7 bits or 10 bits long address over the SDA line to communicate with a particular slave. So it has got its own addressing scheme. Due to the address bits, start and stop bit and acknowledgement bit, there is more overhead in case of I2C for point-to-point -point communication. In SPY, there is no such overhead. Also, one can transfer as many data bits as required. In I2C, one can send one data byte at a time. Now, let's consider the acknowledgement bit. So, the acknowledgement bit is sent after every transaction in I2C, which makes it more reliable. SPY doesn't have that feature inherently included in it. What you gain in the simplified electronics in SPY, you lose on the software. So you need to write your own error handling and handshaking code since there is no way of knowing if the slave received the messages sent to it, nor is there any error checking in the protocol itself. Alright, now let's shift our focus to the hardware and understand its implications. So first of all, SPY uses push-pull design for MOSI and MISO pins. I2C uses open drain design with a pull-up resistor. As I've already mentioned in the previous video, open drain has its advantages, but it sets a limit on the maximum achievable speed. SPY offers more speed in the range of 10 MHz or more. There is no official limit on the speed in SPY. And this speed is due to the push-pull configuration. The maximum attainable speeds in I2C are in the range of 5 MHz for ultra-fast mode. Now, there are different modes and different modes have different speeds. Now, what is the implication of this high speed? So, due to this high speed, SPY is also more susceptible to noise. Thus, it is used if the distance is less than 20 cm and for distances of say around 1 meter, I2C is used. Let's come back to the open drain configuration. So, due to the open drain configuration, I2C supports multi-master system. SPY-based design can only have one master. Also, clock stretching is another exclusive feature of I2C, wherein the slave can stretch the clock, or in other words, it can pull the SCL line low. Thus, it can control the flow of data. This is another implication of open drain config. SPY doesn't have that feature. Now, due to the open drain, devices with different supply voltages, like for example, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, can coexist on the same bus. Such a thing is not possible in SPY. I2C draws more power as compared to SPY due to the presence of load resistor in its design. Last but not the least, SPY is a de facto standard. It's not an official standard. Thus, several variants and customizations can create compatibility problems. I2C is an official standard. Thus, it provides compatibility amongst I2C implementations and backward compatibility as well. Thus, there are a lot of differences between SPY and I2C. So what should be the criteria to finalize one out of these two in your design? So as a simplified rule of thumb, SPY is a better choice if you want to use a small number of peripherals and transfer a large amount of data or data streams at a high speed with low power consumption. 
I squared C is the best option if you want to control several peripherals with intermittent transfer of few bytes of data or where speed is not much of concern. Also, I squared C is preferred when your design requires more than one master. Now, where is I squared C usually used? So it is used in RTCs uh, in combination with your, obviously, the controller. You can use it with EEP ROMs. SPI is used for devices that provide data streams, for example, with ADC or with data logger, wherein you have to do continuous data logging for audio video signals or software flashing devices. Thus, you should select the option that best fits your system's requirements. So this is it for today. I hope you found the video useful or helpful. In either case, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your colleagues or friends who are working in the same field. And I'll see you next time. Bye world!